actually, I was kind of setting myself up for a bit of a battle. Um, it's been a battle the last three weeks preparing for this talk. Um, struggled with physical health. I've been to the doctors, I've had tests and things. Struggled with emotional stuff going on, relational stuff going on. Work's been totally overwhelming, hasn't it, Mary? <laughs> um, like it, there's just been a lot going on. Plus, everything's opening up more, isn't it? And life just somehow feels a bit more overwhelming. But I had to keep practicing what I'm preaching and keep coming back to God and going, no, it's fine, even if my body's falling apart and my emotions are all over the place, I can say that my spirit is okay because I'm connected to God. So I just want to say to you, wherever you are today, whatever you're feeling, however your spirit is feeling, you may be totally on fire for God. You may be hungry for more, and that's awesome. We can never have enough of God. You may have kind of gone a little bit lukewarm. Your spirit may have kind of been dozing or falling asleep. Or you may just feel totally and utterly crushed in spirit. Now God said he is there. He is close to those that are crushed in spirit. He's close to the broken hearted. And I want to just say to you, if I don't say anything else, and if nothing else makes sense, God is inviting you today to just come as you are. Just however you are, just come and receive from him. And I think that's why it's been a battle, because the devil doesn't want us to hear that. The devil wants us to think we're unlovable, we're unworthy, we're rubbish, we're useless. But actually God says you're not, I love you, come to me. So just remember that today. So what does spiritual well-being look like? Um, I love trees. I, I think I look a bit like a tree today. I've got my, <laughs> my green leaves on. Um, but I grew up in the New Forest. And my children are always up trees and playing with sticks. So we, we're quite a tree family. And I love this picture in Jeremiah that's going to come up any second now. Yep, there he is. Um, thanks for the reading, Hannah, as well. I love this picture because it talks about a tree that is planted by streams of water, streams of living water. And um, God says that blessed is the person who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. That is what he's like. He's like a tree, totally solid, totally rooted in those streams of living water. And this tree doesn't fear when heat comes. The heat comes. It doesn't worry when there's a year of drought. I think this COVID year in a bit has felt like a year of drought for a lot of us. We, we're craving kind of spiritual connection with each other. We're craving just social interaction with each other. It has been super, super tough in every way, hasn't it? Financially, emotionally, physically. It's been a tough time. But despite that, the tree is bearing fruit. It actually has cut off here. But the passage said that the tree never fails to bear fruit. And that fruit is the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the character and the nature of God. We all know it. It's love, it's joy, it's peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. And it's that fruit that we can bear if we're connected to God. Um, and I don't know about you, but I want to be like that tree. <laughs> I want to be peaceful. I don't want to have fear and anxiety when things are going wrong, because they will. And so we're going to look today about how we can become like that. How do we get like that? Well, it says it in the passage, it's all about trust. It's in trusting who God is. The more we get to know him, we've just been singing about him being a good father. The more we know who he is, we know we can trust him. We sometimes drag our children out on lovely family walks. And um, often we'll be like in the middle of a beach or a forest or a road or a cliff top. And Freya will be walking along and suddenly she'll like fling her arms back and go, trust! <laughs> and she expects Ed to catch her. And like the amount of times he's nearly like pulled a ligament because he's like run to catch her. And she knows because her dad loves her because he's wrapped around her little finger <laughs> that he will <laughs> run and he will catch his daughter because he loves her. And that's what God's like for us. We've, obviously we shouldn't put God to the test, but he loves us. And we've got that beautiful image, haven't we, in the story of the prodigal son, where that son goes off, he spends all his father's money, he rejects his father, he um, ends up eating pig food, and he comes back, and that father is still looking for him. He's still waiting, and he's still inviting him back. 
And when that father sees that son who's really hurt him, who's hurt the father, he doesn't go, oh, what were you doing? That was so awful, and judge him. He runs with his arms open wide. He runs to the son and he welcomes him home and has a massive party. So I just want to remind you today that God is always looking for you. No matter how far you think you've wandered off, no matter what you think you've done, don't believe the lies of the devil that say you've done too much, you're too awful, you've ignored God for too long. Just come, just come back to God. So that's what the next slide says. I'll just hold it like that. That's cool. So yeah, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. So just come to Jesus. The way we get connected with the Father is through Jesus. Through oh, hi, thank you. Through um, Jesus' death on the cross, like the prodigal dad ran with his arms open wide. When Jesus was dying on the cross, his arms were open wide for us. And he was saying, come to me. I've done it. I've taken the punishment. You have free access to God now. There's no guilt. There's no shame. There's no sin that can separate you from your loving dad now. So just come. And then the next little slide. When we become Christians, when we come to the Father and just receive that forgiveness, receive that love, it says that his spirit, his Holy Spirit comes into us and it testifies to our spirit. So his spirit is chatting to our spirit and it's telling us who we are. It's going, you are a child of God. You are God's child. He is your daddy. And we are able to call God the father, Abba, daddy. It is so intimate. And that spirit, the Holy Spirit, continues to tell us who we are and who God is. God is our loving father and we are his beloved child and he loves us. And we are created to love God, to love each other. We're created for love. It's all about that fruit. So how do we stay like this? How do we stay connected to Jesus? The next slide is um, fast forward into the New Testament. And Jesus is just about to die and he's chatting to his disciples. And he's telling them that he's going to send the Holy Spirit and he's going to help them to stay connected to him. And he says, I am the true vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from you, apart from me, sorry, you can do nothing. I think the more we become, we kind of grow as Christians, we realize we really can't do anything without God. <laughs> and the more we try, the more we realize that it's futile. We need God. So when Jesus went back up to heaven, he sent his Holy Spirit. And it's like the Holy Spirit is the sap running through that vine into all of the branches. And um, he promises us to give the Holy Spirit whenever we ask. We need him daily. We need him hourly, minutely. Um, and just keep relying on him. It goes back to that trusting in him. We can't do it on our own. We can't do it in our own strength. Um, it's all about surrendering to him. And then the fruit comes. The fruit of the Spirit isn't something that we can try and be like or try and do, try and get. It's something that grows over time naturally as we stay connected to Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks to our spirit and makes us more like Jesus. The more we hang out with him, the more we are more loving, more patient, more kind, because it's tested and he helps us and we ask for help and it grows. So I just want to ask you today, what are you nourishing your spirit with? Is your spirit, are your roots deep into those streams of living water? The Bible talks a lot about how the Holy Spirit is like living water. So are you putting your roots down? Are you spending time in the presence of God? Like that rugby player was saying, are you allowing yourself to just stop and to just be, some people I've spoken to have said that lockdown's been brilliant for them because um, they've just had time to stop and read their Bibles and be with God. Um, now, these people weren't obviously key workers or parents or um, working um, or looking at losing their jobs, but that's been brilliant for them. 
But I want to t uh, kind of encourage you today that even if life feels full on and you don't think you've got that time to just rest and be, you do. Um, I had a really crazy week last week where I went into work feeling like I was about to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> and um, I kind of got loads done amazingly because of God. I asked him for help. And then I prayed with some of my colleagues. And one of my colleagues, just in just for five minutes, prayed for me. I hadn't particularly asked her to, but she did. And in that five minutes, it was so lush. It was like I was in the presence of God and I just received from him. And I'm just desperate to go on holiday or have a lovely rest. But that was my rest. That five minutes rest, just being in the presence of God was all I needed to just keep going. We can get that rest in God anytime. So just be thinking, oh, hang on, I need the next slide actually. <laughs> Um, we've heard it already this morning, some like top tips for how we can be kind of nourishing our own spirits. So that first little picture that Freya found for me is about prayer. It's about sitting in God's presence. You don't even have to be speaking to him, but just being aware of who he is. Um, we use the Lectio 365 app, Ed and I, and it's amazing because people help you, guide you through um, praying to God. And the first bit is always just to be still and to know that God is God and take that time out. Um, and then reading the Bible. Um, yeah, the Bible is living and active. You can read the same passage so many times and God will speak to you in different ways. And I was really inspired by that rugby player who spends 20 minutes that may feel unattainable for you, but even five minutes. And if you're not a reader, there's plenty of people online who will read to you. Um, we've been doing the Bible in a Year youth version because it's only 10 minutes as well. And it's really cool. It goes through the passages and explains it. Um, the third one there with the little rubber ducks is about each other. We are part of the vine together. We're meant, we're designed to be in relationship and we need each other to stay spiritually well. Um, and I think that's been super tough in COVID, hasn't it? Where we felt like we can't be connecting with each other as easily or as well. It's almost like God's tipped us out of our church buildings into our communities, which is great because we need to be salt and light out there. But we need to keep coming back together to each other, to encourage each other. It says there, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, towards kind of producing that fruit of the Spirit. Let us not give up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as we see the day approaching, that day is when Jesus comes back. So we've had to find new ways, haven't we, of meeting up, whether it's online or in real person, going for a dog walk, or maybe just bumping into each other in the shops. What I'd just like to encourage you to do now is to think, who is spiritually nurturing me? Who is it that's looking out for my spirit right now? And if you don't have somebody, ask somebody you know who's got the spirit in them. It, it's really helpful to be intentional. Someone came up to me a couple of weeks ago and asked if they could meet me regularly to pray with and just do life and just be accountable to each other. It requires being brave. It requires being honest and vulnerable and actually sharing where you're really at. And it doesn't need to be with everybody, but please make sure there's somebody that you can be spiritually honest and genuine and vulnerable with. And my next question is, who are you spiritually nourishing? If you've got the Holy Spirit in you, who are you looking out for and pouring into? We really need each other. And then the last one is worship, um, which is whatever our circumstances. Those of us are going through really super tough times. But whatever our circumstances, however our physical or emotional or financial well-being is, we can always worship God because he never changes. He is always worthy of all of our praise. And actually, when we choose to praise him in the tough times, even when we don't feel like it, it makes our spirits come alive more. It feeds our spirits. When we choose to worship, I always remember when Dedo shares about when Chris died and Chris and Carol went round and she just chose to say the Lord's Creed. She chose to affirm who God is. He's our loving Father. He loves us and we're built for love. Um, so, yes, be still and know that I am God. That's the next bit. 
So like I said, just come as you are. Check in on your spirit. How is it doing? Do you need more of God? Do you need more of that Holy Spirit? If you do, just ask. He promises to give without holding back. He longs for you to come to him and receive from him. So I'm not going to do any chair aerobics with you because we're not doing physical well-being this week. But I'd really love to do a little spiritual exercise with you today. I'm going to play a clip in a second. And it's just this really cool, passionate preacher talking about how awesome God is. And I think it's really good for us to hear. We can never hear enough how awesome God really is. And then as it's playing, I'd love you to just check in on your spirit and just acknowledge how it's doing. And like I said, don't feel any judgment. Don't feel any, like, don't let, beat yourself up about how it's doing. Just ask God to come and just receive from him. He loves you and he wants to make your spirit well. So after I've played the clip, I'm just going to ask us all to just be silent for a minute and just be still and know that God is God, that he loves you. He's your loving father and he's made you for love. The Bible says my king is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings. And he's the Lord of lords. That's my king. I wonder do you know him? My king is a sovereign king. No means of measure can define his limitless love. He's enduring strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful. He's impartially merciful. Do you know him? He's the greatest phenomenon that has ever crossed the horizon of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. He is the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one qualified to be an all-sufficient savior. I wonder if you know him today. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. I wonder if you know him. He's a key to knowledge. He's a well of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway of glory. Do you know him? Well, his life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous and his yoke is easy and his burden is light. I wish I could describe him for yet he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. Well, you can't get him out of your mind. You can't, you can't get him off of your hand. You can't outlive him and you can't live without him. Well, the Pharisees couldn't stand him. But they found out they couldn't stop him. Tyler couldn't find any fault in him. Terror couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. Yeah!
Brilliant. I hope you all felt connected to Jesus there and just keep pressing in. Um, I think we're going to have the lovely Matt and Jane Taylor do our prayers for us now. So.